<laughs> Hello and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Daria Bennett. I'm the administrative assistant here at Home of Hope. And today I'm going to be talking about a very important topic, which is sexual health and cancer. To begin, I just want to say that I am not a medical professional. I'm simply reading a compiled list of medical facts combined for research for this topic. If you are experiencing anything that may be brought up during this presentation, please reach out to your doctors. They will have knowledge on how to help you. Um, again, this is a natural reaction to cancer medications. I hope you do not feel embarrassed by any of the topics covered in today's presentation. What can you expect starting a cancer treatment? Um, cancer and its treatments can cause a lot of changes for patients, uh, whether it's chemotherapy, surgery, or hormonal therapies. Um, they can put women into early menopause and cause erectile dysfunction in men. And radiation to the pelvic area may cause pain or discomfort during sex. Cancer patients may also lose their body parts during surgery, whether it's their breasts during uh, mastectomies or sometimes limbs to treat sarcoma. The scars these surgeries leave are more than just skin deep, though. They may cause some body image concerns, insecurities, and self-doubt in many patients. Cancer treatment can also be incredibly tiring and stressful. Even if patients don't have physical scars or physical changes that affect their sexual ability, they may not feel up to the sexual activity in the same ways that, as they felt before they started treatment. Which cancers can affect people most? Um, a lot of attention gets paid to cancers that occur in the genital area, which is uh, including ovarian, cervical, testicular, or prostate cancer. Um, but lots of people have disruption in sexual function and other cancers as well. For instance, people with head and neck cancer may struggle with changes in the body image and the fact that sexual activity and kissing is challenging as you can't make saliva. Um, patients with bladder or colorectal cancer may receive pelvic radiation, which doesn't just impact your sexual organs, but it may impact in ostomies, which are a real impact on intimacy. Um, stem cell treatment um, transplants can cause hormonal changes and have a profound impact. Uh, while your treatments have advanced greatly and are often able to cure patients or stop cancer from growing, uh, treatments commonly have an impact on sexual function and body image, whether they are directly related to the genitals or not. Common side effects of treatment like fatigue and loss of energy have enormous impact on both feeling sexy and being in the mood. The importance of addressing sexual health during a diagnosis. Regardless of whether you are partnered or engaged in a regular sexual activity, changes in sexual health and identity are common and can be very distressing. Uh, when sexual health is intact, this can be a very life-affirming aspect of human experience. Intimacy can even help promote recovery and ease anxiety. So from a high quality of life perspective, maintaining intimacy is very important, even if it may not include some of the sort of physical activity. Furthermore, it's important to broaden our definition of what, mean, what it means to feel sexy and be sexually active over and beyond the capacity to have intercourse comfortably. Um, there are some challenges that it can provide for men. Um, for men who have significant erectile dysfunction from treatment, it's important to know that just because this is happening now doesn't mean you won't be able to regain that function. But waiting to feel like yourself again isn't a solution by itself. It's important to recognize that you can still be intimate and sexually active, but you may need to do some rehab. There are various sexual aids that can be helpful, whether it's the pills, uh, vacuum erection pumps, and injections. It is also very important to speak with your care team who can help you address changes in erectile function and get the help you need to regain that function. It is important to note that men can also have pleasurable sexual activity, including being able to have an orgasm without full erectile function. Um, recognizing that you can have the experience of arousal and even climax without having an erection is something that men don't know. An orgasm is happening as much as in your brain as it is in your genitals. Allowing yourself to explore the mental side of pleasure and desire can help improve your intimate life. And you may, if you struggle with this, professionals may be able to help you deepen the mind-body connection. It is often very pleasurable for men to pleasure their partner, and that's something that you can do whether or not you're having an erection or not. Being able to pleasure your partner can still be a turn on for both men and women. Um, being able to be creative and have communication that allows you to explore non-penetrative sex is just as incredibly important. Sex doesn't have to just be about intercourse. Um, for women, like men, it may not feel like sexual beings if they have sexual dysfunction. Early menopause can cause feelings of loss and sadness for women, particularly, particularly if they haven't yet had children and have lost their fertility. 
Um, physically, women may find intercourse to be painful or uncomfortable. They might even uh, feel the need to um, remove from their bodies after surgery. Uh, vaginal moisturizers and pelvic floor exercises can help with physical problems and self-touch can be important for re reconnecting with your body. It is also important to avoid using anything in or around the vaginal area that could be irritating, whether that's lotions, perfumes, harsh soaps, deodorants, or douches. Also, when using a moisturizer, it is really key to moisturize your vulva. It's important for both men and women to figure out what's comfortable and pleasurable for them and to be able to talk about self-touch with their partner without feeling embarrassed. Men might use a vibrator on their female partner to explore what feels good, and women can do this on their own as well. Even if you are in a relationship, feeling comfortable in your own body is relevant for everybody. What if I've had surgery? Um, if you've had any alterations to your body, like a mastectomy or any kind of surgery or scar that results in a numbness or change in sensation, you might need to focus on remapping parts of your body that are in play during your sexual activities and discover other zones that uh, have pleasure to focus on. For example, if you aren't comfortable with someone touching your breast or there's a loss of sensation, and that was a big part of your experience before, it's important not to feel defeated or discouraged. Acknowledging the loss because it truly is a loss and refocus on other parts of your body that still have a lot of sensation. Taking time to get comfortable and explore your body without feeling panicky is a very important part of the process as well. Negotiate with your partner about what feels okay and what doesn't, and you may learn a new means of way for foreplay. If you're feeling any pain, pain can occur from dryness related to menopause or hormonal therapies or from pelvic radiation, and it's the quickest way to lower desire. Physical therapy for the pelvic floor can help make intercourse more comfortable, as can lubricants and dilators. Vaginal moisturizers, which are different from longer lasting uh, than lubricants, can also help alleviate dryness in the vaginal and vulva and should be a regular part of self-care for any woman going through menopause. Um, there are some precautions to take. It is important to pay attention to when you feel like you have more energy and to make an effort to adjust your intimate life accordingly. For example, you may decide that intimacy in the morning makes more sense than at 10 p.m. or that you and your partner have to talk more openly about expanding your routine depending on how you're both feeling. In general, if you are undergoing chemotherapy for your cancer treatments, the recommendation is that you wear a condom for at least two days after treatment during any type of intercourse, whether that's vaginal, anal, or oral. This is to prevent your partner from being exposed to any chemotherapy toxins that may be present in their semen. Um, this would mean that for someone taking a daily chemo drug, it would be the safest to use a condom on a regular basis. This is also a very reasonable question to take back to your medical team. It can be difficult to talk to your partner. This subject is usually on both partners' minds and it can cause a lot of stress, worry, and guilt during an incredibly stressful time already. It's important to discuss your concerns openly and honestly. These conversations work best when they uh, take place in a neutral, non-threatening space, like on a walk, not in the bedroom right before you're about to go to sleep. Uh, I recommend scheduling a time to talk about it rather than springing it on your partner as that can often make people feel attacked or caught off guard. Um, it can also be helpful to use the I language, such as I feel self-conscious about my body after my surgery, and I worry what might be what you might be thinking. Would it be okay to take some time to talk about it? And for some couples, it may be helpful to meet with a therapist to help facilitate these conversations as well. Um, is there anything that your partner needs to do? Uh, being patient, listening, and sharing your worries goes a long way. Sometimes partners have no idea what they do, uh, what to do, so it's important for them to bring it up if they're unsure. Um, you can make it clear that you weren't trying to pressure your partner, but it's something that you're thinking about and wondering if the patient might be wondering about it too. It is often helpful for both parties to think of your sex life as cancer as a new or different chapter in your intimate life together, rather than a continuation of the life you had before the diagnosis. This helps take some of the pressure off both partners and can be a help. it can help avoid a lot of frustration. Um, what help is available if you do have questions about these concerns or just sexual health in general? Um, there's lots of help available. Often people don't feel comfortable talking about sexual health with their doctors. Oncologists aren't always the best to bring it up to either. So if you find somebody in your care team whom you trust, whether that's your oncologist, uh, your nurse, your social worker, a therapist, or someone else, it can be immensely helpful in starting the conversations off.
Um, medications are often available to help with things like erectile dysfunction. And a urologist can also help manage this issue. Physical therapy for the pelvic floor can help women recover from treatment and regain some comfort and sensation. And speaking with a therapist or sexual health expert can help with the mind body components, intimacy and coping with body image issues. The bottom line is that if sex is different from the way it was before and it causes distress, then it deserves care. A lot of patients brush off, brush off sexual issues because they're so thankful to be alive, but quality of life is incredibly important as well. And we're here to help you live the best life you possibly can. And that is the end of my presentation for today. Um, if there's any other questions that you have, please reach out to your medical care provider. Um, Home of Hope is always available over the College Stop Away. Thank you so much for joining me today.